Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Jeremy Leffler, and I work in the Policy Office at the National Science Foundation, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today to the Fall 2021 NSF Virtual Grants Conference. I'm now pleased to present this session covering the Directorate for Computer and Information Sciences and Engineering. This session will be presented by Amar Dashehu, a Program Director in the Division of Information and Intelligent Systems. Hello, everyone. Today, I'll give you an overview of the Computing and Information Science and Engineering, or also as we know it, the SICE Directorate. Um, I am Amar Dasheu. I am an IPA, or Rotating Program Director in the SICE Directorate in the Information and Intelligence Systems Division. Um, and I'm involved in several of the programs that I will highlight today. So let's get started. Uh, I will start first with the mission of the National Science Foundation, which many of you may know. The NSF's mission is to promote the progress of science, to advance the national health, prosperity, and welfare, and to secure the national defense. You can find the organizational chart of the NSF leadership, but I did want to single out here our assistant uh, director, Dr. Margaret Martinosi. And I will also highlight several um, directors and deputy division directors uh, of the various divisions of size as I go through um, the organizational structure of size in more detail. Uh, I also wanted to remind you that we have a new director, uh, Dr. Panchanathan of the National Science Foundation, and we're very excited about it. So um, this is NSF by the numbers. It is a very busy place. 93% um, of its budget goes to awards and grants for research projects and STEM education. 200 million of that goes to support R&D through small business programs. And 1.4 billion of that, of this budget, goes directly to support STEM education and workforce development. NSF makes a large impact on the academic community. It supports 386,000, around that number, individuals, are directly involved with NSF activities, 40,000, 42,000 of which really are graduate students. Um, one number that we are very proud of at NSF is that 25% of all federally funded academic fundamental research comes from the National Science Foundation. So that's one fourth of the landscape. If you uh, see a breakdown by the various disciplines that NSF supports, NSF um, has a major emphasis on computer science. So 87%, for instance, of the total federal support for basic academic research in computer science and computer science related activities comes from the National Science Foundation. So if you're a, a junior PI in computer science or computationally involved activities, most likely you will look at NSF uh, to fund your, your research. Um, NSF has a three-phase uh, process. Uh, it's a merit review process that has become the gold standard for various of our partnering organizations. It is, it is viewed as the gold standard uh, because of the way that it structures and how it emphasizes a, a transparent merit review. Uh, in phase one, after a solicitation uh, funding opportunity is announced, PIs have at least 90 days to prepare and uh, in order to respond to the solicitation with a proposal submission, after the proposals are received by a deadline, then phase two starts. Uh, in phase two, we check, PDs check proposals for compliance, and then they um, look across the country to recruit uh, diverse panelists, diverse reviews to serve on our panels. We hold these panels the panelists uh, make recommendations to program directors. Program directors then consider all of these recommendations and then make their own recommendations to division directors, which then make the final decision. Those decisions are in the form of recommendations still. In phase three, they go for what we know as award processing. This is an NSF-wide activity. All financial aspects are reviewed. A lot of things have to be satisfied in order for an award to be finalized. You can find more information about this in our merit re review website. There's even a, a video available that describes uh, in a little bit more detail what I just summarized here. So these past 
one year and a half or two years, I should say, have been very challenging for the entire scientific research community. So NSF was very lucky to receive about $600 million to share with the academic community in the form of the American Rescue Plan. And this funded a lot of very interesting uh, research. And we are very grateful to the Congress and the administration for the support that they have provided through these challenging times for our PIs. Uh, the request from the president for the fiscal year 2022 budget for NSF is 10.7 billion. And the budget will emphasize um, enhancing fundamental research and development, addressing racial equity in science and engineering, addressing climate science, sustainability research, strengthening US leadership in emerging technologies and constructing additional major research facilities. The reason I'm highlighting these is because these in effect, in effect speak to national priorities that you will see reflected in uh, existing and possibly new funding opportunities. So it's very important when you're a PI to pay attention to these national priorities. I'll say a little bit more about this later on. So here is sort of an outline of the presentation for today. I will give you a, a, a bit more detailed overview of size. Uh, then I will go and, and highlight selected programs uh, and also highlight for you partnerships that our current director is emphasizing uh, a lot for NSF in order to enrich and sustain uh, large activities. So here is the uh, sort of the chart, the, the organizational chart of SAIS. At the top of SAIS, uh, in SAIS leadership, we have Dr. Martinosi, who's the assistant director. And then we have what we call our dad, Deputy Assistant Director, Dr. Joy Dipundu. Size is broken down into four main uh, divisions. So we have here the OAC, or Office of Advanced Cyber Infrastructure. Its director is Manish Parashar, and Deputy Office Director is Amy Friedlander. I will give more insight into what OAC funds, what are its programmatic priorities. And in general, OAC focuses on data and software on advanced computing, networking, cybersecurity, and it has a major workforce development as well, as you will see actually reflected in, in many of the programs across the various uh, divisions of size. And we have the Computing and Communication Foundations, also known as the CCF. Um, and CCF um, has several programs that reflect its priorities. So one of these programs is Algorithmic Foundations. Another one is CCF itself, Communication and CIF, uh, Communications and Information Foundations, Software and Hardware Foundations, and Foundations of Emerging Technology. Uh, the division director here is Walter Cleveland. The deputy division director is Philippe Bergalia. We have the Computer and Network Systems Division, CNS. The director of CNS is Dr. Gurdiv Singh, and the acting deputy division director is Tia Garananda Gopal. And CNS focuses on computer and network systems. And as I mentioned before, it has a significant focus, like many of the divisions, on education and workforce development. Finally, the division that houses me, Information and Intelligence Systems, IIS, is led by Dr. Henry Kautz. And the deputy division director here is Dr. Wendy Nielsen. IIS has several programs such as human centered computing, information integration and informatics, where I serve, and robust intelligence. So I already gave a very high level overview, but uh, here is some more information on what these various divisions of size prioritize. OAC, for instance, supports and coordinates the development, acquisition, and provision of state of the art cyber infrastructure resources, tools, services that are essential to advancing science and engineering research. CCF advances computing and communication theory and algorithms for computer and computational sciences, as well as architecture and design of computers and software. CNS really looks for new computing and new networking technology to find new ways to make use of current technologies even. And IIS, IIS focuses on the interrelated roles of people, computers, information, and how they need to come together to increase our ability to understand data, as well as to mimic the hallmarks of intelligence in computational systems. So by the numbers, size is also a very busy place. Uh, our budget is about 1 billion. We receive on any given year, very close to 8,000 proposals. We hold 400 and some panels, and typically 1,900 awards are made. 
These awards, they support close to 20,000 individuals, 369 institutions. Many of the individuals supported are not just faculty and senior researchers, but they include postdoctoral associates, thousands of graduate students and undergraduate students. And again, as you see emphasized here, 85% of federally funded academic computer science research in the US comes specifically from the NSF budget and a major um, player in that is the size directorate. So size programs really address national priorities in case you're wondering how size makes decision on funding opportunities. I'm highlighting here several of the national priorities. Several of these are also known as industries of the future. If you pay attention uh, to these priorities from the administration. So these are, for instance, AI, big data and robotics. That's a national priority. Another national priority is cybersecurity. Other ones include manufacturing, microelectronics, quantum information sciences, systems, smart communities. We have several funding opportunities on smart communities, computer science education. I'll highlight several of these and advanced wireless research. So these national priorities, they really reflect administration and congressional priorities. So if you have happened to read, for instance, the uh, FY 2021 R&D budget priorities memo, there you will see very prominent artificial intelligence, quantum information, science, and computing. I encourage you to read these uh, national security strategy, national quantum initiative, because then you will understand um, the relationship between these priorities and the funding opportunities that you see announced by size and even further beyond size, the entire NSF. So at SAIS, um, we are very proud to say that our projects or size funded projects have had a remarkable impact on the economy and the nation and on US competitive specifically. For instance, information technology accounts for 25% of the economic growth of this nation since 1995. Size funded projects have resulted into the development of billion dollar industries, anywhere from networking, software, digital communications, computer graphics, AI, robotics, and more. And I will highlight some programs now that you will, you will see uh, give you a further insight into what size funds and how size interacts with either other directorates and even other federal agencies. So one of our uh, major program is what we call the core. Uh, these are core research investments. Size has a strong commitment to core fundamental foundational research. It's at the heart of what we do, and it accounts for more than 50% of the overall size research budget. The approach in the core program is not to emphasize specific areas or sub areas uh, within uh, size, but to cast a broad net let the best ideas surface through this merit review process. It's an approach that we also call let a thousand flowers bloom. However, SICE engages very closely with the community with both PIs and panelists in order to develop new research directions. Pay attention, for instance, to those dear colleague letters that solicit feedback from the community or try to understand specific community interest along certain areas, emerging areas even. So there are various funding opportunities if I break them down by the four uh, divisions of size. So in IIS, for instance, we have these three major programs or three major clusters, HCC, Human Centered Computing, which underwent a recent name change in order to emphasize better this partnership between um, uh, humans and, and, and computing, uh, human machine partnerships. We have information integration and informatics, III, we have robust intelligence, and so within each of these divisions, you will see listed various programs. I did want to alert you uh, to the fact that within each of these programs, you may have small, medium, and large activities. They have various scope and various award sizes for the small activities or the small projects within our core programs. Um, we have switched to a no deadline. There are still deadlines in place for the medium activity. Um, some other recent changes, the Foundations of Emerging Technologies, the FET program is a relatively new program within the CCF uh, directorate. The OAC direct, uh, division, uh, the OAC division also did not have a core program, now it does, it's a, it's a new program. So um, there are many other size programs beyond the core programs. Um, 
We have, for instance, uh, expeditions in computing. This is a large activity, $50 million project, five-year activity. Uh, we have formal methods in the field. We have designing accountable software systems, or DAS. I will highlight several of these in greater detail later. It's worth emphasizing that many of these programs have buy-in from other directorates and sometimes even other partnering federal agencies outside of NSF. So programs, for instance, that are multi-directorate, there are poster, uh, poster children, effectively, of, of multi-directorate activities in size are uh, secure and trustworthy cyberspace, CPS, Cyber Physical Systems. I'll give you some more uh, insight into that program. I'll talk also a little bit more about the National AI Research Institute's program, Smart and Connected Health, Smart and Connected Communities, National Robotics Initiative, and, and many others. Um, we have very two very important programs that specifically target junior faculty, the career program and the science research initiation initiative. I will spend some time highlighting these programs later. And we have many other programs that are led by other directors, but where size has an interest and participates in, these include foundational uh, robotics, for instance, neural and cognitive systems, science and tech centers, engineering research centers, and more. SAIS um, participates in many education programs, computer science for all, computing in undergraduate education. I'll talk about the broadening participation in computing alliances and other related programs. There's a lot of investment at size on infrastructure. So there is, for instance, a major research instrumentation program, mid-scale research infrastructure, CCRI or size community research infrastructure, uh, where I um, was part of that working group until recently. So I will give more detail into some of these programs. Um, there are a lot of big ideas that are instantiated through these programs, future of work, harnessing the data revolution and others, I will show them to you. And SAIS also participates in a lot of entrepreneurship and translation programs. Uh, these are cross-directed programs such as the Convergence Accelerator. The focus of these is to take ideas to um, technologies that can be deployed. Um, within this, you can also find the IOCRCs or Industry University Cooperative Research Centers. These are very large activities. i is another instantiation of the emphasis on entrepreneurship and translation. So let me first start to highlight some programs within OAC, the OAC division in size. OAC is, is driven by the goal to build an expensive cyber infrastructure ecosystem that's driven by the research priorities and scientific progress. Um, the idea here is to leverage investments by universities, federal agencies, commercial sector that all come together uh, to support a diversity of computational resources that can meet the growing demands and needs of modern science and engineering. Uh, one of these programs is the Cyber Infrastructure for Sustained Scientific Innovation, or CSSI. CSSI supports the cyber infrastructure ecosystem. So the core mission of OAC, it spends all levels of data and software stacks and scales. And this is indeed a cross director. This is an NSF wide activity it's led by OAC, but it has a lot of buy-in from other directors from bio, EHR, engineering, GOMPS and social behavioral economic systems, SBE. The competition was held for this uh, uh, for the past year, October 28, 2020, please pay attention to the October deadline in 2021, the new competition if you are interested. Uh, these OAC projects have resulted in very large investments and in leadership class computing. For instance, I'm highlighting here a 2019, a project that was launched in 2019, the Frontera Supercomputing System it has broad utility, supports various soft uh, science and engineering applications, it is the world's fifth fastest supercomputer, and it complements, it adds on to other leadership class computing investments across the US research ecosystem. The CCRI program is another program in OSC. It stands for Size Community Research Infrastructure Investments. The goal here is to plan for community infrastructure, so infrastructure that serves the broad science and engineering community. Um, and it has two tracks. It has a grand ensemble track where activities span over five years and have typical award sizes of $5 million and a medium ensemble track where these are shorter activities of three years and smaller award sizes of up to $1.5 million. 
But all these, activi- all these activities, they, they emphasize uh, the need to benefit and involve the overall science community and support our PIs. This competition was recently held. Please pay attention to the fact that there's a letter of intent due in December annually, and then the full proposal is submitted a little over one month later in January. So for instance, the next letter of intent is now due December 14th, if you are interested and the proposal deadline is January uh, 27 of the next year. Here's another uh, size major investment. This was also um, initiated in August 2019, the Cloud Bank. It involves several University of California instit- um, institutes, universities, and the San Diego Supercomputing Center. And it is a wonderful idea to support our researchers to get them access to the Cloud Bank to so make it easy for them to onboard to use these resources to train also their students. Uh, if you are interested in this, you can learn more about this opportunity. Uh, you Even in our core programs, in core projects that you submit, whether it's small or medium, we encourage PIs to think about leveraging this resource that is available to all the uh, uh, academic community. SAI supports many um, early career uh, programs, so programs that are, are specifically uh, targeting early career faculty. Most prominently here we have the career program. This is actually an NSF-wide uh, activity. You can find it in other directorates. Uh, and there is another one. I'm going to detail both of these later. The Science Research Initiation Initiative, it, it has specific um, programmatic attributes that distinguish it from the career program. Uh, but very important activities beyond these two programs speak to SAIS's mission to support and to prepare uh, junior faculty uh, to um, make an impact. And these include, for instance, proposal writing workshops where you can learn about how do I write a proposal uh, for a possibly broad, diverse uh, panel. Uh, There are PI meetings where there are a lot of networking opportunities that allow junior faculty to identify possible collaborations and common interests with uh, successful, more senior PIs. Uh, There are annual early career workshops that are held that are very beneficial to our junior faculty uh, to prepare them for uh, uh, putting forward competitive career and CRII proposals. So specifically, the career program In some ways, it's NSF's most prestigious award, and it's also viewed that way by many, uh, especially computer science departments across the country. It supports junior faculty that exemplify the role of teacher and scholars. So if you attend these annual uh, proposal writing workshops, for instance, you will learn that it's very important to address three, three pillars, outstanding research, excellent education, and very importantly, integration of these two, of research and education within the context of the uh, API's organizational mission. The career program started in 1996, and since then, there have been more than 200 programs across the divisions and even across the directors that have reviewed career proposals and have resulted in more than 7,000 awards in size alone. PIs are allowed only one submission per year, and there are three strikes or three attempts. Um, The proposal writing workshop is typically held in spring, and the uh, career program deadline is typically the last Monday of July. So this competition was also held for this year. The upcoming deadline would be July 25th, 2022. The Computing Research Initiation Initiative, CRII, is a relatively younger activity than the career program. The goal here is to enable early research independence, but it specifically targets early career um, faculty who lack access to adequate organizational or other resources. Um, It has very specific eligibility criteria. I would encourage you to read the solicitation very carefully and where unclear to contact Cognizant PDs. Uh, It is a smaller activity than our careers. Uh, So typically the budget is no more than $175,000. It's a shorter activity of two years. It must, it insists on having uh, at least one month salary support for the PI plus two year full-time student support. The next deadline would be September 19, 2022. It's typically the third Monday every September. So as I mentioned before, um, NSF and SAIS more specifically, 
uh, specifically supports graduate and undergraduate students. And there are many, many programs that provide such support. So a hallmark program, for instance, is the GRF, GRFP, or the Graduate Research Fellowship Program. It supports individuals, so PhD students early in their graduate training. It has done this every year since 1952. It's really a, a cross-directorate program. The size-related deadline is in October 2021. Please check out the solicitation for the specific dates every year. Um, there are other programs, for instance, um, a new one, an interesting one is CS4 Grad US. And the goal here is to support recent uh, bachelor degree recipients who have been working in the industry but want to return to graduate school. It's a very unique program in that it provides both mentorship and a fellowship for these students. And it has a deadline. It was just held the competition May 19, 2021. Then there are programs that you may be familiar with or not. These target specifically undergraduate students. So they provide research experiences for undergraduates and they come in two flavors, RU sites versus RU supplements. RU sites are larger activities that are typically held over the summer and so provide summer research experiences to a cohort of students, about eight or 10 students is what we see typically and involve multiple faculty. They organize them around some thematic or topical focus. The proposal typically is in August, the deadline. The RU supplements are a different mechanism. These are smaller activities. They are related to a specific project, current award. Um, and the idea here is for a PI to enhance uh, the activities in an existing NSF funded project by including one or two undergraduate students. It's best to submit a request if you think that you may benefit from this and want to engage undergraduate students, it's best to do so by March. There is no strict deadline, but it allows your PD to plan ahead and it also allows your PD to see whether what you're asking for uh, makes sense. So I wanted to highlight here uh, a very important activity across size uh, that goes to education and workforce development, um, the workforce development mission of size, and that is the broadening participation in computing. So effective, uh, as of um, a few years ago, medium and large projects in both core and SATSI, SATSI stands for Secure and Trustworthy um, Cyber Infrastructure, all these projects must have an approved PVC plan in place by the time of the award. What that means is you don't have to submit one when you submit your proposal, but if your proposal is considered, is being recommended, you need to have a BPC plan submitted and approved viewed and approved by the time of the award. So the broadening participation in computing plan really tries to change the culture in the computing community. And, and as it says, broaden the participation of students. So it really prompts PIs to engage diverse students and to engage in meaningful activities. You can find more about what is a BPC plan, how to write an effective BPC plan at our BPCnet portal, bpcnet.org. And you will see four dimensions illustrated here on these puzzles, strategy, target, context, and measurement and dissemination. I would alert the junior PIs here to the fact that many departments now across the country have their own departmental level BPC plans. And it really helps to leverage those BPC plans and figure out which specific activities of those to support with your own, as part of your own medium or large project. Um, here is an activity that again speaks to the mission of size uh, to education and workforce development, and this is computer science for all, or CS for all. CS for all is really a partnership. It brings together educators, researchers, computer scientists. The idea here is to really build community, sustain research-based offers to support evidence-based instructional materials, curriculum, uh, assessments, it also includes teacher professional development and support. And the ultimate mission is to provide access to CS students and computational thinking students as well uh, to these uh, types of resources. The proposal deadline was in February. It's typically the second Wednesday in February. So uh, watch out for the next, uh, the next deadline. 
mentioned before that um, many of the programs across uh, size and even other directorates are instantiations of the NSF standing ideas. Uh, I don't know how much you have paid attention to these, but at some point uh, a couple of years ago, NSF engaged the uh, scientific community to come up with thematic priorities. Uh, all these ideas were uh, processed, they were collated, and 10 big, they were organized in 10 big main categories, which NSF called the 10 big ideas. So you will see here, for instance, harnessing data revolution is one of those big ideas, and it is instantiated in many different programs. I will mention some of those. Future of work at the human technology frontier, that's another NSF big idea. Quantum leap, rules of life, navigating the new Arctic and more. There are also process ideas that uh, specifically focus on infrastructure development. For instance, the mid-scale research infrastructure is one. NSF includes, it has a major focus on education, workforce development, growing convergent research, that's uh, NSF-wide activity that really emphasizes from ideas to translation or deployment. So here is one of those NSF 10 big ideas that I've been personally involved with, harnessing the data revolution. The vision of the HDR idea is to enable new modes of data-driven discovery so that we can ask and answer fundamental questions at the frontiers of science and engineering. It is a recognition that in many disciplines now, we have massive amounts of data, and so we can do data-driven discovery, and we can pose very interesting questions and really advance those domains, such as, for instance, in ecosystem forecasting, in material and uh, catalyst design, earth system science, we have now lots of data, in biology, genotype to phenotype, now we have a lot of data that permit us to answer really uh, cutting edge, address cutting edge problems at the frontiers of science and engineering. The harnessing data revolution has three main pillars. Uh, one is the tripods program, another is the HDR institutes, and then yet another is um, data science score, which focuses on education and workforce. The future of work at the human technology frontier, that's also a very prominent NSF big idea. It is instantiated in several programs across NSF. The overarching vision here is to support multidisciplinary research so that we can sustain economic competitiveness to promote worker well-being, quality of life, pervasive learning, and very importantly, to illuminate the emerging social and economic context and drivers of innovation that are shaping the future of jobs and work and size is a, a major driver of this activity, cross-directed activity. Uh, here's an interesting one. It might appeal to several of you enabling quantum leap. This is really trying to enhance the development of quantum interconnects. The focus here is to allow the transfer of quantum states between different physical systems, different physical states. It supports interdisciplinary teams. Uh, to apply quantum science, quantum computing, quantum engineering. And it has um, two important dates. One is a preliminary proposal that uh, occurs sometimes in April. And then that is followed a few months later with a full proposal uh, sometime in June. If you are interested in, in this um, NSF big idea, please pay attention to the solicitation to learn the new, uh, the new deadlines. Mid-scale research infrastructure is a very interesting activity. It supports very large investments by NSF uh, to build, to design, to implement infrastructure. It comes in two, sort of two different competitions. There's mid-scale RI1 and mid-scale RI2. In RI1, the focus is on cyber infrastructure that addresses community and national scale, um, computational and data intensive science. It has two tracks. There's a design track and there's an implementation track. So design track here, you're planning, you're designing for future mid-scale RI1. Um, this design track can be found in also the mid-scale RI2 or the another one, very large investments, MREFC class investments. In the design stage or the design track, you can ask for typically no more than $6 million. The implementation track is a larger activity that can go up to $20 million. And the focus here is either on new or upgraded research infrastructure in STEM. So it goes beyond uh, sciences, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. 
The MidSkill RI2 really focuses on potentially transformative projects. If you are interested in further delineating the differences between RI1 and RI2, please consider reading those solicitations very carefully. One programmatic difference, for instance, between RI1 and RI2 is that RI2 has a very strong component of student training in instrumentation and research infrastructure development. These are very large awards, 20 million to 100 million that fall under the category of advanced design and implementation. And notice, because these are very large activities, there are three stages that you have to pay attention to. There's a letter of intent sometime in February, followed by a preliminary proposal sometime in March, and these are required, they're not optional, and then the full proposal with a deadline of around September. Please uh, follow the new solicitation to learn of the updated 2022 dates. There are many uh, size cross-cutting programs that make NSF a very interesting place. So some of these programs, for instance, they are organized around AI. There's not one AI program. You will see AI pervasive in several cross-directed programs across the NSF. And then there are specific cross-directed um, programs such as Cyber Physical Systems, NRI, National Robotics Initiative, SATSI, Smart and Connected Communities, all the way to DAS. I will, I will highlight each one of these now, but these are not exhaustive for a comprehensive list of cross directorate uh, programs where size plays a major role, you can please visit a list of size funding opportunities. So AI, for instance, AI is not one program. There are many programs instantiated across NSF that connect two other big ideas, to several other big ideas. So if one looks at all the projects across uh, that, that focus on AI or have a major emphasis on fundamental AI research, and uh, the totality of those is about $120 million. If we expand that to include translational AI research, that goes to $500 million. The AI theme, I would say, it really interacts uh, with HDR, Harnessing the Data Revolution, and the future of work at the human technology frontier. So where does it interact with future of work, for instance, is in how do you advance autonomy, how do you um, really make sure uh, that there are um, sort of beneficial modes of human AI interaction, um, AI infrastructure in the service of uh, the future of work at human technology frontier and more? How does it interact with HDR, with the harnessing data revolution big idea? Well, now we have new models, right, that are made uh, possible by massive amounts of data. So there's a lot of emphasis, for instance, on novel machine learning components, massive data management, uh, new sensing, new data acquisition modes. Um, AI was a major emphasis of the previous director, Franz Cordova, and it remains a major emphasis and interest under the current director at NSF as well. There are, as I mentioned, there are several programs across NSF uh, that have this undercurrent of AI. So for instance, we have collaborative research in computational neuroscience. This program includes bio, science, engineering, mathematical, physical sciences, social and behavioral economic systems, uh, OISC, NIH, even agencies outside NSF and even international organizations. Uh, there are partnerships with many countries such as the UK, Ireland, Israel, and, and Czech Republic, for instance, and many of those, the undercurrent um, um, AI is a major activity. Cyber physical systems is another uh, cross directorate program where AI plays a major role. And you see here listed the various directorates and also other federal agencies such as DHS, Department of Transportation, IH, USDA, uh, Smart and Connected Health and Smart and Connected Communities. These are also cross-directed programs where AI is really a, a major undercurrent. I wanted to alert you, highlight a couple of uh, new interesting programs. Uh, sometimes they only last a few years, sometimes they last longer. For instance, in 2019, there was a new program, AIM Society, and it brought together SIS, SVE, and partnership, the partnership on AI. There's another program, Real-Time Machine Learning, or RTML, and that brought together SIS, Engineering, and DARPA. Uh, fairness, Ethics, Accountability, and Transparency, also known as FEAT. There was a Dear Colleague letter uh, that was published, and it was a way to 
engage the community, understand whether the community was interested in, in this um, thread of research. And that led to the Fairness in AI program. That is an ongoing program uh, where I'm involved. Uh, and that brings together SIS, SBE, and Amazon. There are also the AI Research Institutes. This is a major NSF-wide activity, and it includes several federal uh, agencies, DHS, um, Department of Transportation, NIFA within USDA, and even Veteran Affairs. And I will say a little bit more about each of these uh, programs. So for instance, the AI Research Institutes, uh, with the first deadline of December 4th, um, sometime in December, I should say, uh, this one uh, started as, a, again, a, a cross-directorate activity. It was led by Sykes. Uh, the idea was to build national hubs that brought together universities, government, industry, and nonprofits to advance AI research and education. Uh, these institutes uh, typically are over five years. They have a $20 million budget. They are organized along several themes, and the themes may change from year to year, from solicitation to solicitation. So for instance, the 2019 solicitation had different themes over the 2020 solicitation. Uh, in the first round of awards that were announced in August of 2020, uh, seven new institutes were launched nationwide. In the current uh, fiscal year, um, the FY21 institutes were just awarded. We have now 11 of those. Uh, and now they reach over 40 states. Uh, over seven areas, human AI interaction and collaboration. You can see many of those here, AI augmented learning, big focus on agriculture and food systems. And here is a map of where all the funded AI institutes, the various states across the US landscape that they cover. You can learn more about these uh, at this uh, website here where, where uh, NSF posts news about the AI research institutes. Here is a major cross-directed program, CPS, Cyber Physical Systems, that really aligns with national priorities on transportation, energy, healthcare, and critical infrastructure. And the focus of CPS is how to engineer systems that are built from and depend upon seamless integration of computation and physical components. So this program aims to develop the core system science that we need to engineer complex cyber physical systems. And it includes a TDP option, a transition to practice option, where the focus is systems that can be deployed in the real world. Uh, this is an activity that not only brings together science and engineering, the two major directorates that collaborate on it, but also other federal agencies, such as the Department of Homeland Security, DOT, Department of Transportation, National Institutes of Health, NIH, and USDA. The National Robotics Initiative, or NRI 3.0, so this is done over several revisions, that's the reason for the 3.0, um, this is another cross-directorate activity that also includes other um, uh, agencies, such as the DOT, NASA, NIOSH uh, as well. And the focus here is on accelerating the development and use of ubiquitous core robots to assist humans. There are four main research thrusts, scalability, customer stability, lowering barriers to entry and societal impact. There's a strong coupling with industry and startups here as well. The proposal deadlines for the next year are in February, but do please check the solicitation if you are interested in this activity. SATSI, Secure and Trustworthy Cyberspace, uh, is a program that focuses on uh, how do we secure the nation's cyberspace? So it supports fundamental scientific advances and technology to protect our cyber systems from malicious behavior while preserving privacy and promoting usability. It addresses cybersecurity from three different perspectives. So there's the core uh, that spans the interest of size, engineering, mathematical and physical sciences and social and behavioral economic systems. So the different directorates come together in, this, in the core uh, category. There is another category, education, EDU, the focus of these, of these uh, proposals or of these projects is uh, building cybersecurity education. And then there's a, a third focus or a third perspective, TTP, transition to practice, where the goal is how do you take these systems and make them deployable? As I mentioned before, both SATI um, and the core program across the divisions of size, they really um, now 
um, ask in the medium and large projects for broadening participation in computing plans. Um, the full proposals for SATI are accepted anytime. This was one of the pioneer programs uh, to experiment with a no deadline um, idea. And then from SATI, this idea of no, no deadlines expanded to all our small uh, projects under the core program. Smart and connected communities. Uh, this is a, another interesting cross directorate activity where science plays a major role. The goal here is how do you improve the quality of life, health, and well being learning in communities? Uh, so, the focus is on how do you integrate intelligent technologies with built in environments, the natural environment. Projects here need to be very cognizant that, in addition to uh, proposing integrative research that addresses all the technological and social dimensions of uh, smart and connected communities that they also uh, plan for very carefully meaningful engagement with community stakeholders and integrate the community st stakeholders in their activities. Smart and connected health, uh, this uh, cross directorate program just underwent a um, uh, renaming. It's now known as Smart Health and Biomedical Research in the Era of Artificial Intelligence and Advanced Data Science. And so the naming also signals to you that AI and data science now are very important to this program. This is a cross directory program, but it also it involves the NIH. The goal is to transform healthcare knowledge, delivery, and quality of life through information technology. And it tries to bring together researchers from different disciplines. Uh, so that uh, we can support next generation multidisciplinary science and, and have breakthrough ideas in a variety of areas of value to health. And these areas are also listed in the solicitation. They include networking, pervasive computing, advanced analytics, uh, modeling social behavioral and, co and cognitive processes in system and process modeling. You can learn more about what areas are important to this program in the solicitation. This typically uh, has two dates, February and November. Um, please do check the solicitation for the dates for 2022. RINGS. RINGS is a, it's a very recent program. Our Resilient and Intelligent Next G Systems was just launched. It just held its first competition in July, end of July 2021. It has two tracks. One is Resilient Network Systems and one is Enabling Technologies. And uh, uh, projects here have to address one or more of the various dimensions within uh, the uh, respective categories that they're targeting. So the dimensions, for instance, under the resilient network systems track include full stack security, network intelligence, adaptability, autonomy, exploratory resilience components. The other track, enabling technologies, this has uh, different emphases, the dimensions, that PIs are encouraged to address are, for instance, novel spectrum uh, management technologies, scalable device to edge to cloud continuum, and how do you merge digital, physical, virtual worlds? Please, please do visit the solicitation if you are interested in these very new activities and to also learn the deadline for the next solicitation, the 2022. DAS, Designing Accountable Software Systems, as the name indicates, this is a cross-directed program that focuses a lot of, on software systems and it aims to provide support for foundational research for a deeper understanding and formalization of this bi-directional relationship between software systems in the complex social and legal context within which we find ourselves software systems operating and designing, being designed for in these days. So as the, the objective indicates, uh, these projects need to include PIs that come not just from the software design subcommunities, formal methods, programming languages, human-centered computing, but also PIs, researchers that reside typically in the law, social, behavioral, economic sciences, and who can speak to social systems and networks, and the legal code, the procedures that govern the conduct of people, organization, and countries. The competition for this year was held in April 2021. Please visit the solicitation if you're interested in this program for the 2022 deadline. So now that I've given you a highlight of the sort of the selected programs uh, where uh, science is a major player or a major supporter, I wanted to spend a little bit more time to tell you about partnerships between size and other stakeholder communities. 
So you may notice or not across the various programs that NSF partners with not only federal agencies, I mentioned some of those before, right? Uh, DOC, uh, DHS, DARPA, NIO, or SHMOA, of these, USDA and others, but it also partners with international agencies, with other countries. It partners with local state governments, with foundations, nonprofits, right? Um, open AI and, and so on, um, as well as universities, which is what we know NSF to do. All these partnerships are driven by three primary objectives, deepen and grow research and innovation, make available research infrastructure and develop the workforce of the future. And they are a major focus and emphasis of the current director of the National Science Foundation. Here is a very uh, large activity that is an NSF-led public-private partnership known as POR or Platforms for Advanced Wireless Research it's a hundred million dollar investment, public-private investment, and the goal is to create four city-scale testing platforms so we can enable and accelerate fundamental wireless research beyond 5G. So there is equal buy-in, 50 million from size over seven years, and 50 million for an industry consortium that includes more than 25 networking vendors, device manufacturers, wireless carriers, and you can see some of their uh, logos here at the bottom. The industry partnerships, when NSF engages uh, in industry partnerships, it does so in a very principled manner and it considers really value propositions. So for instance, for NSF, these partnerships need to bring value. They need to accelerate discovery and leveraging of resources. They need to accelerate the translation of discovery to deployment. They need to grow workforce capacity, including research, and they need to increase NSF's visibility to different audiences. There needs to be a value proposition for the partners as well. So for industry partners, they what do they gain? They gain access to the national research community. They learn from our gold standard merit review process. Um, they get an opportunity to have accelerated discovery and leverage resources, accelerated translation, access to the future workforce and also potential intellectual property for technical benefit. Um, I'm coming here towards the end of the presentation, so uh, I couldn't stop saying that this is an amazing time to be in size. And for any of you listening today, you are senior researchers, you have already been tenured at your universities, please do consider coming as program directors, whether, whether as rotators or as uh, permanent employees. Uh, this is a great time to be in size because computing is everywhere. It's pervasive across all society, science and engineering. It intertwines now with so many communities and it's rapidly expanding and evolving. So it's a tremendous opportunity. There are growing programs, revamped programs all the time that you can participate, be a part of. If you want to learn more about size, please subscribe to our list, uh, join size so that you can um, uh, read upon the latest funding opportunities or the latest activities. All you need to do is send an email to this address here with no text in the subject or message buddy. And you can follow us uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, YouTube, uh, we're everywhere. Um, so I think here it might be a good time for me to stop and I would be very happy to field any questions and answers and answer them to the best of my abilities. Thank you. Welcome back and thank you. We, we do have a couple of questions. Amarda has, has been answering questions in the Q&A, so uh, you can also look there for, for questions. And I would say now is the time to send more. We've got a couple here that we're gonna ask, but if you have a burning question that you'd like to ask, please send that now and we'll, we'll, we'll be able to answer it live. Um, the first question, we, now Amarda, you answered some questions I saw already about REU and RET in the Q&A. Uh, the question here is, can you ask for a REU research experiences for undergraduate supplement for an already funded RET award? So this is a great question. There was um, another question related uh, to the interaction between RETs and REUs. What this question is asking is the following, considering the following scenario you already have a funded RET award. I am assuming it is active. Uh, that's very important. If it is not active, the answer is no. 
you cannot add anything to an inactive award. So now the question is, I have an active RET award. Can I ask as a PI for an REU supplement? In principle, I want to say yes, because the idea for REU supplements is you have an active NSF award. And what you want to do is you want to engage undergraduate students. Uh, you have carved up some interesting research projects for them. So the emphasis is on research uh, that are related to the active award. And so the active award serves as an opportunity to broaden the participation of undergraduate students in research. Um, I say in principle, because we always encourage PIs before they submit to actually contact the program director that holds that active award, whether it's an RET award or any other award. And the conversation with your PD needs to focus on the relevance, does it make sense? But maybe also sometimes on the timing, typically, we discourage you to leave uh, this decision to the end of our fiscal year. So these interactions need to happen, I would say, early spring. Uh, they can happen even in, in the fall. That gives us enough time, that gives your PD, the PD of your active award, enough time to make plans. I hope I was clear, but if I was not, please follow up. Okay, the, the next question is asking about the, um, it says, so I'll just read it here. How important is it to propose projects that align with, for instance, the cyber physical systems objectives, but not with existing initiatives in uh, federal agencies interests, such as the Department of Transportation? Right, so the uh, CPS program is a collaboration between uh, two directorates at NSF, size and engineering. Uh, and there are commitments, uh, meaning dollar on the, on the line, from other agencies. The Department of Transportation is one of them, but there are others. There is the Department of Homeland Security, uh, NASA, and NIH. So four other federal agencies that sort of join arms with NSF for this program. If you read the solicitation, um, transportation is an example of one of the sort of application areas where you focus you do not have to focus on transportation. That means you don't have to even consider being aligned with the uh, priorities of the Department of Transportation because there are other sort of programmatic sub areas of interest and they are listed in the CPS solicitation. So just off the bat, uh, energy and industrial automation is one of them. And this focuses on making homes, offices more energy efficient, cheaper to operate, um, there's a focus on distributed microgeneration for the grid. Another focus area is healthcare, biomedical domain, for instance, increased use of these uh, for effective in-home care, uh, more capable devices for all kinds of medical diagnosis. Um, there's a focus on prosthetics, internal and external. And then there's also critical infrastructure. So the usual concerns that we have now about having a more reliable power grid, or a highways that allow denser traffic with increased safety. So you, if, you, if your research does not align with transportation, there are still plenty of opportunities for you to target the CPS solicitation, but you do have to read the solicitation and see what are the programmatic areas um, that it calls into attention. Okay, I've, I have, uh, I've put the, um the email address to sign up for the uh, size announce yeah, um, messages. I've put that, I've replied to that. So you can find to the two people that asked for that and anybody else that would like it can find that in the, in the answered questions. Um, so then the next question is asking about which program is the appropriate one to submit an AI proposal to. So AI um, is showing up in size, it's showing up in engineering, it's showing up in bio. Uh, I do not know the, the details of the methodology you have in mind. Uh, so the right answer to this question really depends on both what problem you are addressing and what is the prominence of the methodology in the problem. So if your focus is on methodology, it is safe to say that size is your possibly primary directorate of interest. But if the focus is not so much on novel methodology, 
but perhaps a, an extension of a methodology to advance knowledge or discovery in a problem. If it's a bio problem, then uh, the bio directorate is where you go to, if it's a geo, geo information system. So it, it really depends now whether it's the application driving your research or whether it's the uh, methodology. Now that said, even if your focus is on novel methodology, there are several divisions within size, as I mentioned during the presentation. If your focus is on formal guarantees uh, or on more theoretical aspects, then you are looking at CCF. Uh, if your focus is more on, let's say, integration of informatics, uh, integration of information and on machine learning, then you have a decision to make whether it's robust intelligence or triple I. If there is a focus on human machine interaction, uh, then your focus is the human centered computing uh, division. What I would actually suggest is that if you are unsure uh, or if there is overlap, you think with multiple programs uh, that you contact various PDs, uh, we talk uh, to one another in order to give the best answer to the PI. Okay, the, the next question is really kind of a, a, a broader question, but it's asking about uh, faculty at primarily undergraduate institutions and how they can compete uh, with uh, graduate level institutions. Right, we actually encourage uh, faculty in undergraduate, primarily undergraduate institutions, uh, so PUIs, uh, we call them, uh, to uh, consider to submit to our various programs, both to core programs, to the career program, to the CRII program. Of course, you have to meet the eligibility criteria. Uh, you should not think that you are less competitive. What I would suggest, especially for faculty in undergraduate institutions, is to think very hard about that balance between novelty of methodology and designing problems that are feasible in your environment, meaning with undergraduates, problems that you can push forward, research that you can push forward with undergraduates. Um, our panels are very careful. Our panelists are very careful and, and very encouraging of faculty across a variety of institutions. Um, what I would highly suggest you to do, particularly if you are a new faculty and maybe you don't quite know how to write a proposal that really acknowledges the environment where you are in, but leverages, really leverages that environment in order to do interesting uh, research and maybe integration of undergraduate education, I would highly encourage you to talk to a PD because um, the PDs will give you specific ideas or examples on how you can um, formulate maybe a, a, an interesting proposal. They will ask you what your ideas are. They will uh, emphasize the integration of undergraduate students. And they will also point you often to resources on, um, that, that help you, for instance, on how to write uh, proposals and how to become uh, competitive in our panels. Okay, uh, the next question is asking for the difference between cyber human systems and human centered computing. Right, uh, that's a good one. So cyber human systems uh, is the old name. Um, so the, the program underwent a renaming in order to basically acknowledge uh, what had happened in the, in the academic community. So if you search for that, either you will get obsolete solicitations or, or dead ends. Uh, so HCC is the new name of that, um, uh, uh, of that program. Okay, uh, the next question is asking for uh, what is the proper program in size for research on secure programming and multi-core programming? Okay, so I will um, give you an answer based on my understanding, but um, I, I would suggest that you actually contact PD. So if you are focusing on secure programming, there are, so the way I understand it, there may be interactions between sort of the software engineering aspects and cybersecurity, then you may want to 
Is my internet connection stable? It's showing that it's unstable. Am no, we hear you just across? fine. Yep, you're coming across oh, just perfect. fine. Perfect. Okay. So uh, I would suggest that you um, investigate for SATSI. Uh, it's one of the programs that, were that was mentioned during the, the presentation. And I would suggest that you engage one of the PDs there. Uh, if there are very sort of fundamental theoretical questions that you are investigating and, and secure programming is sort of the umbrella that, that motivates those theoretical questions, then I would also encourage you to engage PDs in uh, CCF. Between the two of them, I believe you'll find the right home. Okay, um, the next question is asking about interdisciplinary proposals involving human elements, health and wellness. Um, are there, what specific considerations should be addressed for interdisciplinary research in, in size? Wow, that, that's, a, that's a really broad question. Um, so when the focus is on, on human elements, um, then HCC is one of the programs that has those uh, programmatic attributes. Uh, and any of the PDs there can, uh, can talk to you about your ideas. I would encourage sending no more than a one page summary of, of what you're thinking of pursuing. Um, and they can, they can not only tell you whether it aligns with HCC, but that they might also encourage you, for instance, to consider several instantiations of your idea, maybe to improve alignment. Um, there, are, there are often uh, questions when an interdisciplinary proposal comes uh, to size that um, depending on what is emphasized, what is the driving, uh, sort of the driving aspect of the proposal, um, then we make a decision whether it's more HCC or it's more triple I or it's more RI, uh, because often there are overlaps, right? There are often ideas that sit at the borders. And um, the good news is, uh, although I do encourage you to talk beforehand, before you submit something, to talk to various PDs, but the good news is, even if you, let's say, make a mistake or you send a proposal as long as within size, you send a proposal, you think this is more triple uh, I and then I'm sending it to triple I, um, the PDs look very carefully and then they, they interact with other PDs in other programs in order to find the right home. That's still not ideal because you need to understand the program for which you are writing that should inform your writing, right? What you emphasize. So there's not one clean answer here. The best answer I can give you is really um, identify a few that you think overlap with your interdisciplinary proposal, but then engage various PDs in order to finally determine the best, uh, the best alignment. Okay. Um, so the last question that we have here is really asking you to clarify something that we answered previously on, um, on I guess, uh, projects that overlap with different federal agencies. So the question I'm trying to boil this down is, um, so if, uh, would a proposal that falls into the general interest of the Department of Transportation um, get this, it says, let's see, but not mentioned in an NSF solicitation, mm -hmm. um, would it get the same level of attention and interest at NSF and how does NSF, maybe the question is, and how does NSF communicate with other federal agencies for projects that may overlap? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, the solicitation tells you what is prioritized and the, the DOT doesn't hold the panel. Uh, NSF holds the panel. So, so the other federal agencies, as the uh, presentation mentioned, they, they like our merit review process. So the proposals are paneled by NSF, the PD at NSF puts together panelists and the panelists review the proposal based on multiple criteria. And one very important criterion is alignment with the programmatic attributes of the solicitation. If you're proposing something that falls outside of those attributes, um, you may wanna talk to the PD beforehand. Um, it is a, if it's outside, Typically, uh, it will raise questions 
but I do not want to off offhand uh, immediately uh, sort of discount your ideas, but I would suggest that you talk with the PD to understand what is um, in the solicitation and if there is any room outside of what the solicitation mentions. Okay. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I also want to thank Amarda for joining us today and presenting and answering your questions. Tomorrow we'll have our final sessions and we'll be covering the directorates for mathematical and physical sciences, geosciences and engineering. And we'll also have a session dedicated to research.gov and NSF's proposal submission modernization efforts. Thank you again for your participation today and please be well.